If you want to understand what's happening at the Bundy Ranch in Nevada today, April 2014, you have to understand that there is a fifth column inside the US and I will reveal them to you in this video once more. They come from a country in the Alps, which is the only country in Central Europe that doesn't belong to the EU, who parasite on the world through their Nazi banks, whose mercenaries have terrorized Europe over hundreds of years in the past, who financed their sleeper agent Hitler and whose fifth column infiltrated Germany, occupied all key positions, ransacked the entire Europe, stealing all gold reserves and art collections and brought it all home in their banks and caves in the Alps. And after the war left the still smoking rubbles of Europe for Argentina on Red Cross passports and to the United States with the paperclip operation set up by the fifth column sleeper agent General Eisenhower in order to set up the same Nazi dictatorship inside the United States. As they did in Germany with their fifth column octagon sleeper agents on all key positions and together with their very numerous descendants there are real many of them today. And this is what we see happening now in Nevada in and around the Bundy Ranch. And you better get the children out real quick now and just remember what this octagon fifth column in US uniforms did to the children in Waco and in Jonestown. And you better remember how under Swiss US President Herbert Hoover, real name Huber, the Swiss Eisenhower, real Eisenhower, Swiss gay Edgar Hoover, real Huber, and related to the Huber president, Douglas MacArthur and George Patton attacked peaceful unarmed US veterans in 1932, killing and wounding hundreds. Octogon is the real name of their country in the Alps, also referred to as Switzerland. And as deception is the biggest weapon of evil, this place is far from being clean, neutral, innocent and honest. And here you can see one of their fifth column Swiss sleeper agents inside the US by the name of Huber, who also called himself President Herbert Hoover who killed a lot of Americans in 1932 and during the depression that he made with the help of the Swiss Bank of International Settlements. Watch the videos below in the links as Swiss sleeper agents in the US. When their man Hitler lost the war, Swiss Octogon decided to revenge on the US and destroy America from the inside out. And it's this we see today and being fulfilled soon. As they have an entire standing army of Swiss octagon fifth column sleeper agents hiding in all sorts of states, uniforms inside the US ready to wipe out everything American and all freedom. Even Obama himself has Swiss ancestry from the towns of Ried and Kerzers. Please get the kids out now. Before the authorities have a chance to have them wakeoed in Nevada. Innocent little children whacked in Waco by the fifth column in their shiny uniforms. Don't let this happen in Nevada please. Stand up. In 1932, Washington was under siege. The capital was surrounded by over 10,000 unemployed veterans of World War I from all over the country. Their only assets were the bonus certificates they'd been given after the war, which promised a cash bonus sometime in the future. They needed it now. 
At the end of May 1932, nearly 10,000 bonus marchers occupied the nation's capital. And tens of thousands more were on their way. I'm going to get my bonus, and I'm going to wait for it till I get it if I have to wait till 1945. What's that brought you to Washington? Why, well, to beat the undertaker, spend the money before the undertaker gets it. I know who's made this country worth living in. It's just you fellas. Look. Makes me so damn mad a whole lot of people speak of you as tramps. By God, they didn't speak of you as tramps in 1917 and 18. No. <laughs> Take it from me. This is the greatest demonstration of Americanism we've ever had. Pure Americanism. President Hoover was left to deal with the veterans when the Senate rejected their demands. The marchers had stayed, camped out in central Washington. On July 16th, the last day Congress was in session, Washington was on edge. Thousands of angry veterans surrounded the Capitol. Near midnight, the 72nd Congress adjourned. Congressmen left through back doors and underground tunnels to avoid confrontations. The situation had come to a head. The president ordered the evacuation of the veterans from downtown Washington. Now you bring in the troops. When MacArthur moved his troops to the affected area, he knew exactly what he was going to do. And he adorned himself in his dress uniform along with his major aide, Dwight D. Eisenhower. The force stepped off at 4.30 p.m. More than 200 cavalrymen spread out across Constitution and Pennsylvania Avenues. Behind them came 400 infantrymen, followed up by tanks and armored vehicles. The cavalrymen, one of whom is Major Patton, have got their sabers out. The soldiers donned gas masks and without warning began hurling gas grenades at the veterans. The troops advanced, some jabbing with bayonets. It's war, the greatest concentration of fighting troops in Washington since 1865. I knew something was going to happen, that they might be attacked. And uh, I had a press card, so I passed the police lines and then I saw the soldiers advancing into the camp and when confronted with this the men all stood there and said stand firm as long as you can and uh, they started throwing tear gas the tear gas was just burning my face i was trailing behind my dad and he kept hollering come on boy come on boy marchers were choking from the gas just like the battlefields in France. And so they're being forced out of their shacks by smoke bombs and tear gas hurled by the troops who have been called out by the President of the United States. I've never seen anything like it. They systematically went down the line, burned up all the tents and all the possessions of the people there. I was thinking of Herbert Hoover when this happened, because his election was in three months. I thought this would be, uh, would be the finish of Hoover. The orders of the president must be obeyed. And the roaring flames sound the death knell to the fantastic bonus army. In the shadow of the beautiful dome of the capital of the United States of America. The veterans did not believe the country for which they had fought would ignore the plight into which the depression had placed them. Many did not believe that United States troops would take the field against them. By early evening, most of the marchers had been driven across a drawbridge that led to their main camp. The president does not want MacArthur to cross the bridge. And MacArthur disregards the order. Eisenhower later says that he saw this happen. MacArthur says, I cannot bother with pieces of paper doing a military operation. And so he crosses the bridge. All through the camp were scenes of panic. My dad says, let's get the hell out of here. The soldiers are going to kill us. Then troops began to set fire to their wooden shacks. One reporter wrote, 
The blaze was so big, it lit the whole sky. A nightmare come to life. The president looked out a window of the White House in the direction of the fire, then retired for the night. And the roaring flames sound the death knell to the fantastic bonus army that ends so disastrously in the shadow of the capital of the United States of America. The morning after the bonus route, public sentiment took a dramatic turn against Herbert Hoover. If the expulsion needed a human face, it came in the person of Joe Angelo, whose story was published across the nation. Joe Angelo gets the Distinguished Service Cross for saving Patton's life on the battlefield. The next morning, Angelo comes to the uh, burnt out field to see Patton. And Patton says, take this man away, I don't want to see this man. The BEF was broken up. The men returned to some city or other, there to roam the streets, hopelessly seeking work or to shuffle in bread lines. There they remain, crying examples not of the need for the bonus, but of the need for a new American system. Here we can see a comparison of sleeper agent Swiss Mr. Huber 1 and sleeper agent Swiss Mr. Huber 2 who changed their names into Hoover. So when in 1923 the Swiss started to finance Adolf Hitler in Zurich by their agent from Octagon, General Ulrich Wille, they activated all their sleeper agents for the motherland Switzerland. One year later, Swiss Mr. Huber I became the director of the FBI for the next 50 years or half a century from 1924 until 1972, who took care of all the Hitler sightings in Argentina at the Colonia Suiza after the war and had them disappear from public at some federal bureau without investigation. And he had the best US president, JFK. Five years later, the other Swiss Mr. Huber, too, got US president, enabling the biggest robbery in 1929 to get uh, the money into the motherland, Switzerland. So by then, there were two Swiss Hubers at the mightiest key positions together with Swiss General Eisenhower, setting in place the course of World War II. Just watch in Google, list of Swiss Americans and Swiss American. Look how the Hubers look alike, certainly being of the same breed from Octagon of the Alps. The same nose, same facial expression, same brachycephalic skull form etc. And as all charming things come in three, there was a third Swiss Mr. Huber, Albert Friedrich Armin Huber, whose mother knew Mussolini when Mussolini was in Bern, Switzerland. Yes, they all were in Switzerland, weren't they now? So here you can read about the third Mr. Huber. Charming people. And this third Swiss Mr. Huber became one of the Swiss Nazi bankers for the Islamofascism related to the Palestinian SS mass murderer Amin al Husseini, who was a personal friend of Adolf Hitler and spiritual father of Yasser Arafat, and responsible for the murder on hundreds of thousands of Serbs, Gypsies, and Jews by the Muslim Hanjar SS division who were doing the holy war jihad in the name of Hitler in Europe, in the Balkans. You can read it yourself, just punch pause about the Swiss involvement in wars and stirring up people against each other. What a charming people, eh? And here you can read it in German, it's only in German in Wikipedia. 
uh, for the ones who are able to read German. Just punch. Pause. So these are the type of people Swiss Mr. Huber number three liked and therefore even converted to Islam, getting the name of Ahmed Abdallah Ramadan al Swissri. Sounds like Swissy, doesn't it? Or just Ahmed Huber. This was an extremely dangerous man who just converted to Islam for good Swiss business and his own personal fascist Swiss hatred towards uh, humanity. I've told you, the Swiss octagon are the real puppet masters and great eminence behind the screens. And the entire Swiss population fosters these extreme right-wing Nazi fascist ideologies and will give it their full support. So this here is out of a, um, out of a website and he was part of a uh, of a Swiss Nazi organization. Um, I'll show it to you here. These are some members who. Uh, so this is called uh, the Avalon Gemeinschaft, Avalon Community. A very scary thing where Swiss Nazis collaborate together with uh, with fascist Muslims. I don't say all Muslims are fascist, by the way. There are quite a few good Muslims as well. So, this is Avalon. It's just around the corner, it's just a few kilometers from here where I am. And I had to do with these extremely dangerous people. Walk in and out of the Swiss Parliament. Now I fully understand why in 2002 six Nazis forced themselves into our house in Hindelbank. And why the sixth Nazi was an Arab. Because Mr. Huber's Islamo-Fascist Avalon Gemeinschaft community is just around the corner, a few kilometers away, in Kirchberg, the next village with a letterbox in Efliger. Here you can see it's in Efliger. And we were living just around the corner when this happened. So I wrote this, what happened that day, uh, 12 years ago. I send it, I sent thousands of letters to Swiss politicians and Swiss people asking for help and uh, the only thing what happened is they, uh, they put me in prison and they forced me in front of a psychiatrist, Mr. Kurt Kunz, a pal of the, uh, of the Swiss Nazi judge, Mr. Vicari, and they said, well, I'm crazy. You, know. you can see here, we were living just a couple of kilometers away from this, uh, this Mr. Swiss Huber, a very dangerous guy. Um, and, and, and this is the reason for that the six men was, a, uh, was an Arab. I, I, I never understood it until now. But uh, these guys all protected by the entire Swiss population. And when Mr. Huber died, Num the Huber number three in 2008 in Muri, he surely knew Muri's pedophile Ernst Stoller, whom I sent into hospital and saving two children out of his hands that day. Now I fully understand why it was me who got sentenced to one year in prison and not the Swiss pedophile. The child molester knew Mr. Huber, the Nazi. Both in Muri and Mr. Swiss Hubert III must have known the SVP Nazi Judge Jean-Pierre Vigari, who sentenced me to prison and not his pedophile pal, and not even looking at the witness accounts of Tom Warner from New York. I happened to be at the wrong moment at the wrong time. So this is how I got in touch like with these Swiss Nazis. So I send this to thousands of Swiss. 
Yeah, Mr. Tom Warner. So, Tom, if you see this, contact me. I tell you, he was there. I recognize him. Ahmed Al Swisri Huber. He was there when, when these six men they came into our house and threatened me. I was with my first son, who was only a few months old at the time, was still a baby. There wasn't absolutely nothing I could do. And so we left the home, we went to France, we escaped for two years to France. When I came back they tortured me with code O2T. They dragged me in front of a psychiatrist saying that I'm crazy. And um, they've been threatening me ever since and tell me to shut up. But I won't shut up. I've got YouTube now. This was the man. He was one of the six men together with one Arab. And I understand it all now. Why me and my family, we all had to suffer. This is Switzerland. And they all get backed up by, by the entire Swiss population. I tell you. It's not only the Swiss People's Party. It is the entire Swiss population. They're all a bunch of Nazis, I tell you. You hear me, Swissies? It's not Al Swissri, it's Al Swissi. Eh? But I won't forget it. This is how things get done in silent, invisible ways in Nazi Switzerland. And this is why it needs the NSA to shine light in this darkness and the highly criminal Swiss banks, to which the traitor Snowden was assigned to do in Geneva. Switzerland and their Templar Octagon organization are the brain behind Nazism, Fascism and World War II, who stir up world peace and set up peoples, races, religions and ideologies up against each other to gain an easy buck on the expense of others. Send in the US cavalry, now, and this time without any Hubers. The motherland of the two Hubers, or Hoovers, that betrayed the American people, killed US presidents, robbed the American people blind, put them in a war, robbed them with the Bank of International Settlements and the Federal Reserve. and had fire over the world. This is the motherland of the Templars, Octogon, the base of all evil. Stand up, Americans, and open your eyes. I'll be with you. It's time to stand up. I give you all the proofs and all the facts, so now do it. My video, Octagon Rules Over Pentagon, has been banned in the US for obvious reasons. Because Octagon and the Swiss really do rule over the US. Watch the Pharaoh show and Octagon the Empire of Darkness to see how the Templars founded Switzerland and the Swiss banks. The Swiss never really integrate when they move to another country and when they expand it to the United States. They kept organizing in their Swiss Vereins and secret clubs. Okay, you might want to say, then what about the Chinese and the Chinatowns, or the Orthodox Jews in their self-chosen ghettos? Well, these people look obviously different in their funny clothes and customs, and you can pick them out from a mile. Whereas the Swiss look just like the majority of the American population and therefore find no difficulties at all in hiding and infiltrating and taking over. And if you look at their numbers in Wikipedia, you can see for yourself that there are more Swiss in America than there are Jews and Chinese altogether. And some of these Octagon Templar Swissies even made US President as Herbert Hoover and Dwight D. Eisenhower. 
And Herbert Hoover in 1929, who was president, when the Swiss Bank of International Settlements robbed the American people blind on Black Tuesday, October 29, 1929. And this Swiss US president didn't do a thing to help the American people who were starving. Well, you can have a look at it. Look for yourself, you know. It's all here. Governance, govern, governors and presidents, yeah. Herbert Hoover, you can see when. And Dwight D. Eisenhower. And of course we got the other Hoover. A terrible man, Edgar Hoover. It's from the name Huber, Swiss. Their ancestors were named Huber, not Hoover. So there was Huber, the uh, the president, yeah, Hoover, from the Swiss name Huber. And there is the other uh, Hoover. Now oh, there he is. J. Edgar Hoover, also Swiss descent. They're all Swiss. They never integrated. They always kept faithful to the motherland, Octogon. And didn't give a damn about the American people. I mean, that's why J. Edgar Hoover killed John F. Kennedy, didn't he? John F. Kennedy wanted to uh, do something about the Federal Reserve. Well, I'll talk about that later. And the Swiss US President Herbert Hoover even or Huber had the uh, American children starving during the Great Depression in order to prepare the Americans for war while the US money was used to finance Hitler's war industry see my film the Swiss Templars banks and Mr. Huber here even looks like the other Hoover J. Edgar you know the Swiss always they, they all look the same so um, yeah, so this one here is Herbert Hoover. You can all look it up in Wikipedia. So, there's some things about him here. So here you can read it all about Herbert Hoover in uh, Wikipedia. Just punch it in, in in Google. So, this is interesting. The family background. Well, let's have a look. Uh, the Swiss needed only six months after their man Hoover or Huber was in the White House to execute the greatest robbery ever of the American people. The name Hoover comes from the Swiss German name Huber, the name from his father's side together with Burkhardt. And both his parents were Quakers of which you can see their octagon logo here just as the CIA logo and the almost like the NATO logo. And here once more the Octagon Quakers logo. And then additionally there was another Huber or Hoover. Don't know what to call him anymore. J. Edgar of the FBI or the FBI who was a Freemason, a pure Swiss member of Octagon of the Templars and as queer as a broomstick. That's why, when I was in the army, we used to call the FBI the faggot bunch of incest. And look how he looks like the other Hoover. This is the same family. You know, it's, it's almost the same picture as Herbert Hoover, the guy who stole the, uh, the American savings of the public on Black Tuesday um, um, in um, November 1929 with the Federal Reserve and the, uh, and the, um, and, and the Swiss uh, Bank of International Settlements. But look, he's, it's the same face. It's family, I tell you. It's all, well, anyway, the Swiss, they all look alike. They all look alike. Well, actually, there he is, the other one. I'm, I'm very bad with computers, you know. So maybe can, somebody else can uh, draw a comparison and put the pictures together. A couple of pictures so we can so here's the other Hoover look it's just the same same breed same breed same face it's, it's all in the family look Herbert Hoover same it's all the Swissies in power believe me 
And then here in Wikipedia, it's this chapter here, which is quite interesting. Early life and education. Well, let's have a look. Well, here it says he was Swiss German. I know Scheidlin, that's a Swiss name anyway. And Huber, of course. <laughs> it says uh, on the left, German Swiss descent. They're all Swissies. And there he is again, the Swiss Mr. Huber. And it, I mean, th this is the typical way they are. The way this man behaved, so secretive and um, with his hatred towards all the others and using the police and using the uh, hierarchy of, uh, of the system. It's so typical Swiss. I recognize the Swiss in it. And look at it, how he was, he was serving under which presidents he was serving. Well, of course, under John F. Kennedy and in office. And there it says, um, where it says, I'm sorry, I couldn't find it, but here it says he served under Herbert Hoover, the other one, Mr. Hoover and Mr. Hoover. Well, what a nice couple, eh? Well, couple he was, yeah, he liked men, male couples, he did, you know, terrorizing us, normal, healthy people. Octagon and the powers of darkness use many homosexuals because through their sexual inhibitions and needing to hide it from normal people, homosexuals are very good at keeping secrets and smile. So here we can see J. Edgar Hoover or Mr. Hoover together with his boyfriend. But only queers would go out together and dress identically while holding hands having their sexual appetite written all over their faces. They call it unisex. Nice, charming, isn't it? It's like dressing up for a ball. Now, and here they are again, Mr. and Mrs. Hoover, or Hoover, whatever. And there again, like twins, it's so obvious, isn't it? You know, unisex. I don't want to know about the name of the uh, the vacuum cleaner with the same name. God knows what they did with that one. And there they are again, Clyde Tolson and J. Edgar, Mr. Huber. Well, this is a, uh, a silent code among homosexuals, like dressing up the same way, especially in a time, at the moment, in an era where you shouldn't let others know, you know. So they started developing secret codes, uh, like dressing up the same way. Well, it's so obvious, you know. So this is the homosexual code of, that, of those days and still, you know. It's like dressing up for a party. What a cinema. You can probably look it up and dig it out, you know, in some, some of those gay communities' uh, websites or something, you know, like... Uh, the dress code, you know, you probably find it, but um, I don't fancy digging too much in there, in it, you know, it's, it's already appalling enough. And in the very same Hoover FBI style, in the motherland of Mr. Hoover, they even have the Swiss Pink Cop organizations. In the very same Octagon Templars tradition of the two Templars sharing one horse together and worshipping Baphomet. Well, I mean, this is Octagon, you know, so, well, Mr. Huber would have loved this, or well, he knew it. Well, this is the symbol of the, uh, of the Knights Templars, you know, two guys on a horse, nice and warm, cozy together, just like, uh, Clyde Olsen and Mr. Huber dressing up the same way. Well, they dressed up the same way as well, didn't they? 
Well, you can read some more in the uh, the Octagon Templars Pink Cup organization after Mr. Huber's style in the of the motherland, you know. Yeah. And uh, they even have a contact somewhere on this uh, on this website with an email address and all that there contact. Well, I mean, it's too much for me to do it yourself. And it's by these evil structures, healthy, normal families get terrorized, as me and my family have to endure for 16 years. But we just want to raise our kids in peace. As if these sickos hate us, normal people. Just as Mr. Huber hated JFK incredibly much, just for being a good person. So, when Kennedy in his November 15th, 1963 speech said there is a plot in this country to enslave every man woman and child before i leave this high and noble office i intend to expose this plot and it only took another seven days after until the swiss huber and his pals from the motherland octagon had him done Kennedy couldn't expose the Swiss plot any further, but I will. And do save, copy, download and upload this film in haste, because they will ban and delete this document very fast. I think it was last year, this guy here, he made this film, J. Edgar, about Mr. Huber. I wonder if he would, made it, if he would have made it differently if I would have explained to uh, this bloke here about Mr. Huber's genealogy. Who knows? In order to help humanity towards peace and justice, I've put my life in great danger with this video. Please someone help. All banks are in fact Templars banks by the Swiss. So when Kennedy on June 4th, 1963, signed the executive order number 11,110 against the Federal Reserve in the hands of Octogon. They gave Swiss Mr. Huber the order to execute the job, just as they murdered Wolfgang Umfogel in a Swiss torture detention center in 2010 and many, many, many more. Then Lyndon B. Johnson became president after the Swissies had put aside the obstacle and LBD is a direct descendant of William the Conqueror, King of England, who was his 23rd great-grandfather. Yes, it's all fair aristocracy who rule. The old world order and this is the new world order with their Freemason things and the Templars are part of it as well as I explained in uh, the film Fair Aristocracy. You can all see how Mr. Huber or Hoover, both of them, was just as secretive and ruthless as the Swiss are. Really nothing leaks out and they keep tight by the Swiss laws of silence of octagon. And because the Swiss and Mr. Huber are as precise as a Swiss watch, also Robert Kennedy had to be terminated, together with a few other Kennedys. I wonder if his wife Jacqueline had put on her pink dress and pink hat to please Mr. Huber on that very day on November the 22nd, 1963 in Dallas, when they killed the best president America has ever had. Only two presidents have acted against the Federal Reserve and both of them hit the deck before their time, Kennedy and Abraham Lincoln. And now the only US president in the entire American history has dropped a couple of Swiss banks. Is he really trying or is he just being pushed by some senators or something? It is highly suspicious though that he's on the Swiss list too. Well here he is. See my video about this. So this is the Swiss Americans 
list list of Swiss Americans in Wikipedia I already showed it to you so here's the other uh, Wikipedia website about the Swiss Americans uh, let's have a look at the facts where they went to and when it started So right after the Middle Ages, which officially ended in 1500, so from 500 to 1500, that's the Middle Ages, the Swiss started to come to America in the 1500s. And the first Swiss to come was Theobald from von Erlach. Uh, the name von, it means it's, an, it's, a, it's the aristocracy. So he was a nobleman of the fair aristocracy, whose family name I filmed in the Templar's castle of my video, The Pharaoh Show. And he told all his pals, just as the Swiss mercenaries did in Alsace, when they emptied the land of its inhabitants and killed them all and their children during the Thirty Year War, so the Swiss could settle down there. And they still speak a Swiss dialect in Alsace, France. Similarly, how they organized the murder of the Jews by their Templar Nazis. It was all Swiss made. <coughs> so you can... see the uh, where they went to and let's have a look at some immigration statistics concerning the Swissies in the US before 1820 some 30,000 Swiss immigrated the US between 1860 and 1880 50,000 Swissies 1881 1890 82,000 next 30 years 90,000 after 1945, 25,700. Between 1961 and 1990, 29,100. Adding up to at least 300,000 300, Swiss Americans immigrating to the, to the US. So, considering California had 117,700 and Ohio had 86,147 Swiss Americans counting 2007, they must be in their millions today, maybe up to 20 million Swiss from a country founded by the Templars, not really integrating and going for the key positions of the American society and crushing the US values as Swiss Mr. Huber 1 and Swiss Mr. Huber 2 did and millions of them transforming America into a dictatorship just as the motherland in the Alps. There you can see some more facts here and here. So many US cities were founded by the Swiss as Sacramento, Pittsburgh and Denver, thus explaining the funny things going on at Denver Airport with a massive amount of Masonic symbols showing the real identity uh, of the place. So Denver Airport, here it says Timmer, Timmerman Metals, it's all Swiss. Well no wonder the New World Order is all Swiss and it's uh, Templar stuff, that's why. And Denver was um, founded by the Swissies. These are proofs folks. Denver Airport, Denver founded by the Swiss Pharaohs, I told you so. It's them ruling the world, folks, and they founded Denver. So this is why there's a concentration of pharaonic stuff there. Wake up. These are the ones. Wake up. A whole forest of pyramids on top of Denver Airport. So this is the stone I showed before Denver Airport. Do you see the Templar symbol behind? The V there? And the first settler, von Erlach, I think it was in the Pharaoh, it was in the Pharaoh show, and I think it was behind his name, 
family name that was the same symbol. Do you remember? Well, go and have a look. <laughs> and this too apparently is Denver Airport. So in your suitcase, a little Swiss reptilian traveling with you. What charming, isn't it? The Swiss, just as the J. Edgar Hoover, or Huber, are very secretive people, full of hatred towards the world and other people, who after Black Tuesday, World War II, are still robbing the American people through tax evasion with their ruthless, highly criminal Swiss Nazi Templar banks, getting trillions of dollars from all over the world through tax evasion today. So it's not bank robbers robbing the banks, it's the banks robbing the people. And they're Swiss. The banks are Templar banks, all banks. There are no Jewish banks. It's all Templar banks. It's Swiss. Wake up, people. Yeah, Dwight D. Eisenhower, president. Swissy. Dwight D. Eisenhower was also one of them, from the Swiss name Eisen, meaning iron, and Hauen, to hit. The Swiss name for a blacksmith or a smith. So this is the... Um, the uh, Swiss list again here. So it's uh, the Swiss list. There it is. And there are many more. See my other videos about the financing of Adolf Hitler by the Swiss. I don't want to repeat it here. Thus, the Swiss from Octagon having their agents on both sides, Adolf Hitler financing Zurich by uh, Swiss General Ulrich Wille from 1923 on and the Supreme Commander of the Allied Forces during World War II Five Star General Dwight D. Eisenhower, a Swiss Here you can see him doing the, the Templars V symbol just on Den as on Denver Airport and uh, just as the first uh, Swiss immigrant almost in the Middle Ages into the uh, Americas uh, von Erlach with the, the V symbol in its coat of arms. And then there's Appies, uh, the advanced passenger information system with the, with the double V, like Denver Airport, Appies, advanced passenger system. It's the Templars, boys. Well, no wonder. The Allies had Switzerland get away with the Nazi gold without invade, invading the damn place. No wonder the Allies did nothing about thousands of US airmen in the three Swiss concentration camps. See my video about that. No wonder all these young soldiers got sacrificed on 666 D-Day. See my video about Omaha Beach. No wonder the OSS, Office of Strategic Services, was tied with both hands concerning the Red House files and no wonder the Allies under Swiss command never bombed the railway tracks leading to Auschwitz and other camps. Here you can see him with the double V symbol of the Templars. The tracks would have been such an easy target with no AA, anti-aircraft, flak, nothing. But Swiss Octogon was too busy filling their Swiss Templar banks with Nazi gold, ordering their Eisenhower Swiss Octagon agent not to interfere on that side of the agenda. Both Eisenhower parents were Mennonites who, as Anabaptists, massively left Switzerland for America. And in, in, so here we can see that we are so happy to die for them. Stop waging their wars. And think of Swiss sleeper agent Alec Jones with his Swiss logo and Templars V and how they murdered the real deal Bill Cooper. It's the same V you just saw uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower make. Templars V. There's a lot of disinfo in the internet about Alex Jones, that he's a Zionist Jew and all that. But he doesn't show any Jew stars or Jew symbols. No. He shows Swiss crosses and Templar Vs. Never talking bad about Switzerland. And his middle name is Teutonic. Emmerich or Emmerich. Meaning the leader or the Fuhrer. Just as the other shouter who got financed by Switzerland. 
Funny middle name for a Jew, isn't it? <laughs> I don't give a rat's ass if you want to blame the Jews for it all, because I don't belong to them. But I do mind that the real enemy will slip away again. The Octagon Templars from Switzerland. And I do mind injustice and lies. By the way, Roland Emmerich, the famous Hollywood movie director from Germany, has the same Teutonic name, family name, as AJ's middle name. This is Templar stuff. This is as is V. And he's showing the Swiss cross on his logos as I showed in my other videos. Come on, people, wake up, wake up, see the signs, see the, see the proofs, look at the facts. So this is from my other video, you can see the title on top. And, um, well, I mean, he's showing Templar signs, Swiss logos, the V's, and uh, these are the facts. So this is what Alex Jones is all about. This is what he's showing. Look at the movie, look at this video, and you see more proofs of that. I can tell you of many more Swiss infiltrators who deliberately destroyed the US and American values, but the list would be too long. So for the moment I mainly stick with the two Hoovers, or two Swiss Mr. Hoover and the Swiss blacksmith, who so devastatingly betrayed the American people and brought misery to the world. Because you can all check it out yourselves, as these are solid proofs. And both Swiss Mr. Hubers and their hideous crimes dealt with the Federal Reserve and the Swiss Nazi BIS Bank of International Settlements in 1929 on Black Tuesday and in 1963 in Dallas. The Swiss were in it every time. I am quoting JFK and his speech about the Swiss Octagon's secret societies and the enemy within, whom I intensively have revealed in my videos. Please, someone help my children. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically, opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. We decided long ago that the dangers of excessive and unwarranted concealment of pertinent facts far outweighed the dangers which are cited to justify it. Even today, there is little value in opposing the threat of a closed society by imitating its arbitrary restrictions. Even today, there is little value in ensuring the survival of our nation if our traditions do not survive with it. And there is very grave danger that an announced need for increased security will be seized upon by those anxious to expand its meaning to the very limits of official censorship and concealment. That I do not intend to permit to the extent that it's in my control. And no official of my administration, whether his rank is high or low, civilian or military, should interpret my words here tonight as an excuse to censor the news, to stifle dissent, to cover up our mistakes, or to withhold from the press and the public the facts they deserve to know. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. 
I revealed it for you, Mr. President. Mission accomplished, sir, half a century later. From 1963 to 2013, taking exactly 50 years. Let's act now. Every time a genocide takes place, the Templars, the aristocracy of the Per A and Switzerland and their banks have their dirty little fingers in it. And another one on the list of Swiss mass murderers from Octagon was General Custer, also called the Squaw Killer and murderer of little Native American children, which is a Swiss speciality to attack and terrorize the defenseless as they and the Swiss Nazi Templars organized during World War II and even on the Germans and their children during the Thirty Year War. So here you can see the obelisk at his grave. Wow, only a pharaoh gets an obelisk on his grave. And he's from the motherland of Octagon, the base of the pharaohs in the Alps. Octagon waits their chance and then they do it again and again and let out their natural born hatred towards humanity and mostly on the children. The name Custer, it's not English, it comes out of German and is originally written with a K and a U with two dots on it. And watch the word Palatine here, I'll come back to that later. So this here is in uh, Wikipedia about Custer. There it is. So this here is from Wikipedia and you can see he is uh, buried, his tomb is in uh, West Point where the obelisk is. He got an important place because he's a pharaoh, a pharaoh from the base of Switzerland. So do know Indians, Native Americans, my brothers, that it's not the average white man who did this. They did it with us too, you know. It's pharaonic, and it's Switzerland. You got Swiss cheesed. You got that? And look how innocent these Swissies always look. It's amazing. Oh, there's, there's no, there's no emotion on his face. Like you know, that's that's how they are. There it is again, innocent Swiss face. There's, there's no wrinkles, there's n no emotion, it's like there's nobody in there. The German name Kusta is the name for a church servant whose task it is to light the candles, open and close the church doors, prepare the books, Bibles and songs, ring the bells, etc. It derives from the Latin name Kustos. In the Old Testament, they were called the Levites in the synagogue. So, you can read it if you want. What this? I could only find it, find it in German, of course. So here you can see a map of Germany where the name Kuster, or Kuster, like in general Kuster, is uh, concentrated a lot. And it's here. This is the Palatine. And from here... They went to England and afterwards to the uh, United States. So this here is Switzerland, here's Basel, here's the north of Switzerland here. And after the Thirty Year War, which ended in 1648, they settled down all over southern Germany. Uh, because two thirds of the Germans were dead and murdered by the Swiss mercenaries. And this place here is Alsace, which was completely emptied. 95% of the population, the gallo romanic population, they got murdered by the Swiss. And then they went further north, well of course they stayed here as well, and they went further north into the Palatine. And this is where General Custer's ancestors came from. So, you know, um, yeah. So he was not English, he was not Irish, he was not Norwegian or Italian, it was German. 
and he came from Switzerland originally uh, from Octagon so that's where he came from the mass murderers and the squaw killer the squaw killer's ancestors Paulus und Gertrude Küster came to the US in 1693 and just after the 30 year war from the German Palatine Rhineland in southern Germany but they were not German but Swiss as the Swiss mercenaries murdered two-thirds of the German population during the Thirty Year War and massively settled down in southern Germany and Alsace where 95% of the original population got Swiss cheesed. So the Thirty Year War and the enormous genocide on the German people ended in 1648 then Custer's Swiss ancestors settled down in Alsace just as Obama's Swiss ancestry. Obama's ancestry took the same route then they went to Germany and only 45 years later were in the US where the Swissies went for the key positions as usual and just as General Custer Octagon rules over Pentagon and uh, it might be very well that Obama's ancestors they are related with Custer's ancestors it's one big family anyway you know one big evil pharaonic octagon family it is that says switzerland a few came to germany from switzerland well i tell you it was not a few there was many yeah but the palatines and here it says there's a lot of the the palatines they went to england here it says arrival in england and I give you some examples of that, you know, today's examples. And, uh, well, after that, they went into the United States. And uh, it says, migration to New York. Oh, well, look it up in uh, Wikipedia. Even a Rockefeller. He's from the Palatines. There you go. Nice, eh? So here's some more Swiss who Custers or Custer who came from um, over the Palatines into England and then made it to the US. Well, here you see an octagonal statue there, it's in Manchester. Somebody go and have a look, maybe uh, we are changed Manchester. Have a look where the Custers are from Switzerland. So, these are Swiss sleeper agents from Octagon. They even bring their Octagon symbols with them. See, this is today. This was, it's only half a year ago, in October 2013. There you go. Yeah. There's an article in the Union Leader. <clears throat> yeah, in Manchester, about the Custers from Switzerland over the Palatines. They're not German. And that says again, notable Palatines. Rockefeller, he's the uh, progenitor of the Rockefeller family. Another Swissy, I told you. It's all Swissies. And of course it's a banker, a Swiss banker, who doesn't give a damn about the Americans, does he though? What did he do against Black Tuesday in 1929? Well, he probably conspired together with the Swiss president Herbert Hoover and gay Ed Edgar Hoover or Huber and Eisenhower. Wakey, wakey, people. The genocide on the Native Americans was a Swiss idea, as usual. This is Octogon. So, my dear Native American brothers, don't blame all the whiteys on it. Because like this, you won't get the real perpetrators of the genocide. So here it says the Cheyenne, nicknamed Costa the Squaw, squaw Killer. I, you know, maybe the Native Americans are not the easiest people to, to go to come around with, you know, but um, I don't think they're liars. They're not. That's why they, I think they, they, they'll tell you what they think. There it says, they nicknamed Costa 
the squaw killer and the baby killer. Ah, it says, who did that? Well, the Cheyenne did. That says, the Cheyenne. And I think that's the truth. I mean, they already did it with the Germans. You know, 30-year war. Then they went to England from the Palatine, from Switzerland and into the US and did it again and they do it again. Then they did it with the Jews, Second World War. It's the same octagon. Oh, there you go again, the mass murderer, Costa, he's not a hero at all, you know. Octagon, they celebrate their own heroes, you know, but they're not our heroes, are they now? The heroes of the pharaohs. Charming fellows, eh? So here's some more about the, the squaw killer from Octagon. Bringing shame upon America. And the legacy of Octagon continues to this very day as we can witness in this YouTube channel here called CostaWest.org where Swiss Custer and his Swiss genocidal soldiers get celebrated as heroes. Frank Braun from Bern, Switzerland, John King from Basel, John Latman from Zur Zurich, Robert Zen from Bern, Vincent Charles from Luzern, Frederick Lehmann from Bern, and the rest of the Swiss killers and mass murderers, all from Switzerland, just as many of the SS were from Switzerland. And you can see it's from 2010 or almost, well, almost 2011. This is today. It still lives, it still lives on here in Switzerland. They honor like Mr. Custer, the, the, the score killer here in Switzerland. This is Octagon. And you can see uploaded in 2010. You're not forgotten. Well, nice, isn't it? Well, they don't forget it here. They love these sort of things in Switzerland. Look, the guy even has a website uh, honoring the score killer. And guess where Mr. David Cornut or Cornu of the website and YouTube channel is from? <laughs> yes, Switzerland, of course. Paying a tribute to his fellow countrymen whom he calls the Swiss heroes at the Little Big Horn, who committed genocide and mass murder in the name of the USA under the US flag, loading these crimes and shame of Switzerland upon the people of America. Well, don't they look alike? Well, this is Mr. David Cornut from, what? Well, let's stress on the word nut, Mr. Cornut from Switzerland. And don't you think they look alike? Mr. Custer and Mr. Cornut. What's well, both names start with a C as well. Well, and here he is, Mr. David Cornut. Also in 2010, uh, he, they say he's a special reporter for human rights. Well, don't make me laugh. In, so he's talking here for the United Nations in uh, in the motherland, of course, Switzerland. Which, I mean, the UN is a scam anyway, you know. It's a spy organization for um, uh, for Octagon. How can they let a guy like this talk for the United Nations and discuss human rights issues? How can they do this? I mean, this this is. This is really horrible. This is shocking. I mean, go and look at his, at his video here, a tribute to Swiss soldiers in the US 7th Cavalry, 1876. 
He says it each morning after the reveille of the regiment, I pray for her. Well, who is her? Well, Switzerland, of course. They call it here Die Schweiz. Uh, the Sisters of Isis. That's what he's praying for, the Swissy. And the Swissy goes on talking about the Swiss sleeper agents within the US saying, because you never leave Switzerland. You just bring her along. Wherever I go. In life and in death. My soul will always be here. Saying literally that a Swiss soul will always be in Octagon, Switzerland. Even when living in the US for hundreds of years. Well, here you got it. Definition of a Swiss sleeper agent. Like J. Edgar Hoover, President Herbert Hoover, General Eisenhower, General Custer and millions of others just living next door. The Swiss also says that the Swiss will never really leave Switzerland and bring Switzerland with him on a, or her without, wherever he goes. Meaning they'll never integrate and keep conspiring against the world inside their secret Swiss lodges and organizations. At the moment, Obama is throwing one general or admiral after the other out of office. Is he throwing octagon sleeper agents out? Or is it the other way around? Clean cut Switzerland, and remember the big deceiver tries to appear as innocent, clean and neutral. So here we can see one of the many Swiss newspapers in 2012 where an appeal for violence on American citizens is being made and published. They urge the Swiss to take up arms against the monster of USA and to chop off hands of American citizens, torture them and kill them and just anyone else who dares to criticize the Swiss banks. You can read it here black on white. The Swiss Nazi journalist's name is Daniel Kaufmann. You can see his picture here from the Mietetic newspaper from the criminal Nazi state of Switzerland. I mean, look at the guy, I mean. <laughs> Do read what Peter Odinsov said about economic and political hitmen working for Swiss banks and taking out targets worldwide. And the torturing of foreigners through code O2T in Swiss torture detention centers. Watch the Pharaoh show from Gure for more. Ole, wohin soll ich? Das, das oh, das darf ich. Das, nee, das das nee. So here we could see how the maker of this video got attacked and hit by a Swiss cop only because he opens up his mouth. And guess what? This happened in the very same town of Bergdorf in the canton of Bern in Switzerland where this newspaper is from and which is notorious for its high concentration of neo-Nazis and their attacks on immigrants. And all this finds 100% protection under the rule of the Bergdorf Nazi Justice Department, who protects them. 